Hello and welcome to Tea is Good, Books Are Better, the podcast where we drink tea and talk about books. I'm Raven. I'm Jessica. What are we drinking today? It's my uh, apple cinnamon chamomile again. <sighs> cool. <laughs> yep. Well, I'm drinking my uh, vanilla nut cream with oat cool. milk and honey. <laughs> same old, same old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was rushing today, so I just grabbed. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, I lied. That's not what I'm drinking. Oh my god. I forgot because I picked up that one first, but I forgot I changed my mind. <laughs> um, I actually grabbed my vanilla peppermint one. Ooh, I think I had a few of those the other day. You did. The box is like almost empty. <laughs> and um, yeah. I put oat milk in it by mistake. Ooh. Because I forgot I didn't have the vanilla nut cream. <laughs> Uh, but it's actually tastes fine tastes good Ooh, yeah but i have this thing lately and by lately i mean like for the last year uh-huh. where i feel like i can't breathe through my nose oh like, like ever like it's closed up not not in the way where, like, one of them seals when you have a cold or something, but in the way that it feels like it's always, like, kind of clogged up. Mm. Or, like, stuffy. Yeah. But, but, like, I'll blow my nose and, like, nothing will change. I suggest looking in the mirror and, like, put a flashlight up there, take a look, because I found that mine are swollen shut at the back. Oh. Sometimes I do the dust allergies that get really bad when there's no airflow in this basement suite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I bought an air purifier for that. <laughs> Just for my bedroom. And did it help? It helps. It's not cured, but I no longer wake up every morning like sneezing and n- nose is constantly watering and Mm. when it constantly like having to take a allergy pill every day mm. I don't have to do that no more yeah I just I feel like I can never get like a proper breath through my nose it always feels shallow like I don't maybe you can hear it oh yeah do you <laughs> hear how hard it's like trying yeah that's, your nostrils are closed Oh my god. Also, you can talk to a doctor about that too. (laughs) Because that's not normal. Uh, Yeah. And it's like, (laughs) maybe this is TMI, but like, (laughs) when Jake and I are kissing, I can't fucking breathe. Oh. (laughs) Like, I need to pull away to like take a breath. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, something's not right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's funny, I've had that before. With nost- my nostrils being like, closed shut and having a hard time breathing <laughs> while I'm trying to do stuff. Oh god. Yeah, that there's cute. other stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck! Okay, maybe I should ask my doctor. Uh, so annoying. I just wish I could... I don't know. I don't know if doctors are that helpful. I don't know. Maybe it's an allergy. It's a, fingers crossed it's an allergy. Yeah. But not a food allergy. Cells are the worst. I know I'm allergic to my rats. That's oh. I know. <laughs> that could be it. Well, not not to their fur or anything. It's Their the... dander? No. I think it's their pee. Cause... Ew! Yeah, every time they scratch me, I break out in, like, really big hives and really itchy. Oh my god. Yeah. And obviously they're walking around in their own pee and stuff, so it gets on their claws. But yeah, 
did some googling and it sounded like I'm most likely allergic to the ammonia in their pee. Goodness. Yeah, so that's kind of tragic. Like ammonia in general? Or just in rats? I don't know. Where would I encounter other ammonia? Is that like in bleach? There's ammonia in some cleaning products, yeah. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't know because I don't pee. Oh. Well, I'm not allergic to my own pee. But it's pee also. and then touch it and then see if you break out. Well, <laughs> I mean, I. I've dribbled on my hands a couple times when I'm like wiping, so. <laughs> so it's the. I'm not allergic to my own pee, but maybe that's just because it's not like breaking my skin the mm-hmm. way like their little claws do. Oh. So maybe if I did like have a cut and then got my own pee on it. <laughs> it would I would break out. I don't know. Anyway, this is a weird conversation. This went a weird direction. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> anyway, let's stop talking about cutting myself and peeing on my own cuts. And before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you to our patrons. That's Tobias, Eric, Jake, and Barum. Thank you so much for all your support, guys. Well, um, <laughs> let's talk about a feast for crows. Oh boy! Okay, where did we leave off our characters? Uh, hi. Brianna. Oh, sorry. The re- sorry. The reason I brought up the not breathing thing is that influenced my decision to choose the peppermint tea. Oh, to help you breathe? Yeah, hoping the menthol and the peppermint would open up my sinuses or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Hopefully it's a spicy. It's, Cinnamon, not, it's super mild. Um, yeah, um, I know. Yeah. Technically, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have some old cinnamon tea somewhere. Anyway, mm-hmm. go on. I, I, I. So, Nimble Dick leads Brienne to where he directed the fool, and they find Shagwell and two more of the bloody mummers. Mummers. It a little bit. <laughs> Dick is killed in the scuffle, but Brienne then kills all three. Before she kills all of them, though, one of them tells her that the hound took the Stark girl while she was heading to River Run. Hmm. And she thinks that means Sansa? Yeah. Because everyone thinks Arya is dead. Right. Then the... it... Sam, right? Yes. Sam is on a ship and he learns that Jon Snow switched Gilly's baby for Mace's son. Mm-hmm. Which Well, that's what Maester Aemon oh. says. Yeah. That's the only evidence he has and Gilly's crying. <laughs> sure. Well, mother should know. Mother should know. Well, she hasn't confirmed it. Oh, okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Alright, yeah. chapter 25 is Brienne. Let's get into it. So Heil Hunt takes the heads of the outlaws and has them tied to his saddle on their journey back to Maidenpool. Uh, Brienne hated this. <laughs> yeah. This is gross. That's pretty twisted. Why well, carry rotting heads? <laughs> <laughs> so Brienne and Pod ride like 100 yards ahead so that they don't have to smell it. Ew. <laughs> ew. When they arrive at Maidenpool, Brienne... Uh, thought for sure that Hyle was going to claim that he killed the outlaws to Lord Randall, but he surprises her by telling him what really went down when presenting Lord Randall with the head. Oh. Lord uh, Randall tells Brienne that she proved what she set out to prove. Now it's time to take off her armor and go home like an obedient, like the obedient woman that she should be. Uh, he has a ship ready to go to Tarth, and he wants her on it. Brienne tells him no, that <laughs> she has her oath. Yeah. This guy sucks ass. <laughs> he does nothing but demean her, even when she's done something undeniably impressive. Right? He just doesn't care. He's like, just, just get, get back to your job, woman, in the kitchen. Ew. <laughs> Who cares that you're killing all these bandits? We don't need you. Okay. Not your job. Abomination. <laughs> gross. <laughs> Sir Hyle stands up for her and tells him that she's stronger than most men. Lord Randall is 
still disgusted at the idea of a woman pretending at knighthood, and he won't hear it. He doesn't care how awesome she is. She's a woman, and she shouldn't be there. Yeah. Even if uh, she's he... better than a man in every way. Yeah, <laughs> she's still a woman, and that's not what she should be doing. She yeah, should be- she's still trash. Pumping out babies. Yeah. Not playing with swords. <laughs> Uh, Lord Randall tells her that he will not have her beneath his roof and tells her that as long as he resides in Maidenpool, she will not be welcome there. No one wants so, to be welcome in your fucking house anyway, fuckface. Yeah, no one likes you. Yeah. Randall. Fucking eat shit. <laughs> Brienne walks out of the hall with Sir Hyle hot on her heels. Sir Hyle tells her to meet him at the Stinking Goose the next day. His cousin had been sent to find the hound, and he may have info, and he skedaddles, leaving Brienne confused on why he's helping her. Huh. I'm confused, too. Yeah. It could be because he's, like, impressed by her, and mm. now feels like maybe he owes her a favor, or maybe he just likes her more now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's impressed by her. Show me your way, sensei. <laughs> yep. After looking around for a place to spend the night, Brian and Pod, they finally find shelter at a storm-wrecked trading galley at the port. Brian barely sleeps. She has constant nightmares. The next morning, they head to the Sticking Goose for breakfast and they raid around for Sir Hyle. Right when she's about to give up uh, and move on, he arrives. Sir Hyle tells her that Sandor Clegane was last seen in the salt pads where he was looking for a ship. He pulls out a map and starts pointing at places the hound has been seen and whatnot. I find it surprising. I guess that means the hound is alive and managed to follow Arya to the salt pans, if that's true. Oh. Huh. I guess. You wouldn't really mistake someone else for the hound. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe the mountain, but the mountain apparently is like way bigger yeah and he doesn't have a burned face bro and also everyone knows that the mountain is dead right bro <laughs> i think that's widely known knowledge yeah yeah uh apparently lord barrack's men are also on the hunt for him they want to hang him for the men he killed in the salt pans so he's also killing men in the salt pans what the heck Sheik. Also, there's another band of Lord Beric's men being led by his supposed lover, Lady Stoneheart. What? Uh, <laughs> she was supposedly hung by the phrase, and Lord Beric brought her back from the dead. What? <laughs> Brienne wants to head to the salt pans to start her investigation. Sir Hyle tells her that a Septon had arrived a couple of days before, who was leaving the next morning to the salt pans, and that they should travel with him. Okay. Brienne is like, no, that's not. <laughs> no way. She's like, no, <laughs> there is no they. Just her and Pod. And Sir Hyle tells her that Lord Randall has dismissed him, and he is going to hunt for Sansa himself, with or without her. Maybe he just wants the coin. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> then, so, the next morning, they meet up with the Septon, who is leading a donkey, carrying a massive load, and a large dog. And they head out. Mm -hmm. Septon Marybald is the type of Septon that travels from village to village, giving to the poor and conducting holy services. So he's technically homeless. He doesn't belong to a sect. Maribald is talks that, a lot- Is that pretty unusual or is that like something fairly common? No. Perhaps it's common? Maybe? Maybe in this day and age it's not because of how dangerous the roads are. Yeah, I feel like Brienne was not like stunned by it or anything, but the I feel like it it seemed unusual to her. Mm. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I remember. It's been a minute since I read this chapter. Same. <laughs> <laughs> We're really bad at, like, 
reminding ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> We're professionals. I know. <laughs> we have lives. <laughs> I have to work. <laughs> Feed myself and my children. Children. <laughs> you mean Johnny? <laughs> and Bonnie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Forgot you have a cat. <gasps> Sorry. That's your niece you're talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Maribel talks a lot to Brienne as they travel. He's not wearing shoes. Gross. And his feet are black and hard. Uh, Grosser. <laughs> it's like a hobbit. Oh, God. I just got chills. <laughs> black and hard feet. Ooh. Oh, stop. He explains that this is his penance for sleeping around as a younger septon. To strengthen his flesh. Okay. All right. I gotta love those guilt-focused religions. Shame, shame, shame for being human. Yeah. And it's like, what, what is the crime of sleeping around? Is it making bastards or something? Like in that day and age, what would be the problem? I think he was a sept. And they're sworn off. Sworn to be celibate. Except home. Okay. Right. And, uh... Okay, so his punishment is walking around for the rest of his fucking life without shoes? Yeah. After, yeah. like, a year or something, does it... Doesn't it just not hurt anymore? You get, like, thick calluses? <laughs> and basically, his feet are hard and black now. <laughs> Ew. So it's, like, not a punishment <laughs> after, like, a year. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's just got hobbit feet now. Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, okay, man. Podrick tells him about Sansa, whom they're looking for. Maribald prays for her after learning that she is with the proud. The proud. The hound. Mm. He doesn't think she's at all gonna live or remain pure. Oh. <laughs> They travel slowly, because my bold is walking. But Brienne is grateful for this septum, as she is sure that they would have gone lost without him. They stop at a marsh, where two women and a girl trade a basket of clams for three oranges, and they confess their sins to Maribold. Get their blessings. We told to pray certain prayers. <laughs> three Hail Marys and uh, one Our Father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when they set off again Brienne mentions that the war hasn't touched this place Maribold explains that they don't have anything the soldiers would want these um, are people who have never met their lord and King's Landing is just a name to them he explains that there are many villages like this like this one that he visits on his travels villages that are so far from the goings ons mm. Be, like interesting like whole different world if they're not connected yeah he explains that his dog is not his he just decided to join him on his travels i love these <laughs> relationships with animals when <laughs> they decide they're gonna hang out with you for the rest of their lives <laughs> is that oh, actually yeah. a thing <laughs> <laughs> i think sometimes travelers mm. have like animals decide that they like them I've seen TikToks of, like, a cat that will follow someone home. Oh, <laughs> chosen. They've been chosen. <laughs> <laughs> he explains that no one dares to try him as long as the dog is by his side. He tells him that wolves have gone terrible recently, though. That there is a great pack that roams the trident that has numbers in the hundreds. Ooh. Yeah. He has not seen them, but he has heard that this pack is led by a monstrous she-wolf. Ooh, my Mary. <laughs> um, so they have oranges for dinner, and the next day is basically the same. They arrive at a marsh village around midday, and Maribald holds a prayer. Circled, maybe. And leaves some food with the villagers. Dude, the fucking traveling again. Yeah. Come and visit all these tiny ass villages and watch Maribald pray with them. I don't give a Look. fuck about either. peasant villagers or Maribald the Septon. 
<laughs> right and his dog and donkey and this forced backstory to try to endear us to him before he gets killed off excuse Again. you no spoilies <laughs> hey it's not a spoiler I haven't read ahead that's just a theory <laughs> <laughs> based off of the fucking what way that George has been writing <laughs> fuck <laughs> god sorry I'm getting mad <laughs> Gosh darn it, George. I don't Gosh give a fuck. Darn it. Uh, as they leave, Maribald warns them that the villagers have spotted some broken men lurking about. He asks them to let him feed and pray with them when Sir Hyle, unfazed, I forgot Sir Hyle was with them, <laughs> says that they're as good as dead. Maribald, though, has more sympathy for broken men. And uh, so he explains a little bit the broken men and. From what I gather, broken men are soldiers uh, with PTSD who uh, haven't been able to gather their wits to get themselves home. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. So these are like people with like uh, who are like mentally unwell, very mentally unwell. Right. After he explains the broken men, Brian realizes that he must have been in a war himself and asks him about it. And he says that he was in the war of the Nine Penny Kings. Whatever Ooh. that is. What is that? <laughs> and that's that chapter. Cool. Oh, like nine Penny Kings. <laughs> so another boring ass Brienne chapter. Mm -hmm. Broken Men sounds sad. <laughs> it's like the most interesting thing in this chapter, honestly. Mm. For me. Mm -hmm. What did you like? The dog? Um, I liked, give me a minute, just a sec, <laughs> <laughs> learning about his feetsies, hard and black, uh, that made me want to vom, so <laughs> not that, I liked hearing about Nymeria, ah. I liked how, the, the detail that apparently, the massive she-wolf leader would let no other wolf mount her. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> and it felt very Arya to me. <laughs> it sure did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also forgot, but I also enjoyed hearing Lady Stoneheart's name. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's just getting dropped in, like, here and there. Yeah, whispered, and you're like, what? Who's that? Who? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? What are we supposed to know about her so far? I think if people put, like, the two and two together from that chapter where Nymeria finds the body. Mm -hmm. Did we read a chapter, another chapter about her, or was it just Nymeria? Um, there was... A chapter where one of the Freys goes to meet up oh, with uh, the what are the what's the, the band of brothers called? The um, Man Without Banners. Man Without Banners. Yes, he goes to meet up with them for something I forget, and he gets like introduced to Lady Stoneheart, and then he gets hung. I mm -hmm. think. Oh. And does he recognize her? I Do think so. Uh, fuck, I'm not remembering. Damn, we are useless. Yeah, I think he, he does, and is he must have, because he was there. I definitely have no idea what role she is going to be playing. Yeah, I am a curious and curioso. Me too. Um, but that's about it for this chapter. Everything else is pretty meh. I do think that we're getting some forced backstory for the Septon. So he's probably gonna get killed. <laughs> um, I am curious about the War of the Nine Penny Kings. Do you think it's a spoiler if I google that real quick? I don't. Because it's something that, like, is in the past, right? Mm-hmm. I think it was definitely in the past. Alright, let's see. The War of the Nine Penny Kings also known as the Fifth Blackfire Rebellion, 
was a conflict between the Band of Nine, a group of merchants, mercenaries, and pirates from the Free Cities and the, king and the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. After the Band of Nine had successfully conquered the Stepstones, King Jaehaerys II Targaryen, aware of the fact that the Band of Nine were set on conquering the Seven Kingdoms for the last remaining Blackfire pretender, Malus I Blackfire, dispatched an army to the Stepstones to defeat the enemies of the Iron Throne. Okay. I don't know anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. This tells me nothing. Nope. Alright. Now we know. <laughs> hey everyone, just a quick aside. We just became affiliates of Buzzsprout, which is the hosting platform we use for our podcast. If you are interested in creating your own podcast, please consider using Buzzsprout. It made it easy to get our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and dozens of other streaming platforms. They also provide you with a podcast website, detailed analytics to see how your episodes are performing, and tons of guides on how to improve your listenability. And if you follow our link in the episode description, you will get a $20 Amazon gift card when you sign up for a paid plan, and it helps support our show. Thank you. Back to the episode. All right, shall we move on to Sam? <gasps> Sam? Yes. Okay, chapter 26 is Samwell. Sam stands at the window waiting for Darian to return. Gilly, who is unkempt and miserable, suggests that Darian doesn't like it here with them. He likes where the wine is and the smiles. They are in Bravos, and Darian had been spending a lot of time out in the city. Sam could hardly blame him. Still, he wishes he would return. Night is falling. Lately, Darian has been trying to write a song about a woman called Moonshadow, who had heard him singing one night and rewarded him with a kiss. <laughs> this angers Sam. He thinks that Darian should be singing about the wall and the valor of the Night's Watch. That was the whole point of taking him on this journey, after all, was so that he could persuade a few young men to take the black. And those had been John's instructions. Speaking of John, Sam wonders when his friend's heart turned to stone. He asked Mr. Eamon once, and was told it happened when he raised John up to be the Lord Commander. <laughs> Sounds like John is taking that job very seriously. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Yeah. If he wants to, uh protect the entirety of Westeros. <laughs> he needs to take it pretty fucking seriously, I guess. <laughs> yup. Yeah, he needs to put his own um, emotional attachments aside, which is sad, but yeah, I get it. Sam doesn't want to believe that John did what Maester Aemon thought about switching the babies, but why else would Gilly weep so much? And he is too afraid to just confirm with her and ask her whose child she has with her. That's why I kind of corrected you at the start there, because he doesn't know for sure, but he's pretty sure <laughs> that she has the wrong baby. Yeah, okay, okay. The maester stirs and asks why it's so dark. Sam thinks it's because he's blind. <laughs> <laughs> maester Eamon's wits are wandering more and more since they arrived at Bravos. Oh. Yeah. He complains about being cold, and Sam reminds him for the fourth or fifth time that they have no wood. The innkeep will not give them more unless they have the coin, and Sam had spent the last of their coin on a healer from the House of Red Hands. The healer ended up giving Sam half a flask of dream wine, saying it would help the maester's passing. When Sam asked if there was anything else they could do for him, the healer asked, Why? No potion, infusion, or tincture would make him young again. Death was in him now. So, uh, sounds like Maester Eamon is not doing well. He is 102. Oh. Which is pretty crazy. <laughs> in that day and age. Whoa. Yeah, it's bananas. Maester Eamon says they need to go down to the ships something he had suggested before. Sam tells him he's too weak to go out, but he says they can go tomorrow and find which ship is departing next for Old Town. 
But that's not what Eamon wants. He says they will find answers about the dragons at the ships. He must know. So it seems important to him as a Targaryen to know if the rumors about the dragons are true. Sam tries to get the maester to eat, but the old man refuses. He agrees to some water, though. But they don't have the good water, only canal water. The good water comes over the arches of the great brick aqueduct the Bravosi call the Sweetwater River. Rich men have it piped into their homes while the poor fill their pails and buckets at public fountains. Okay. I mean, that doesn't seem so bad. At least they actually get access to it. <laughs> Right, they have water. Yeah, I almost would have expected, like, the poor people to just have the shitty canal water. Mm hmm I'm not sure why they don't have the good water then, if they can just go to a public fountain and get some good water. <laughs> go, Sam, go. Like, am I missing something? <laughs> Do they don't have a pail or a bucket, maybe? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> the maester complains about the cold again, and Sam tells him again that they have no wood. They did pay for a room with a hearth, but had no idea that wood would be so costly here. Trees, it turns out, do not grow on Bravos, save in the courts and gardens of the mighty. Hmm. And the Bravosi won't cut the pines that cover the outlying islands around their great lagoon because they act as windbreaks to shield them from storms. Okay. Kind of interesting. So instead, firewood is brought in by barge. For the second time, the maester says they must go to the docks. When Sam gives him the same answer as before, he asks Sam to go in his stead then, and bring him someone who has seen these dragons. Sam, dismayed, tells the maester it was only a story. Darien has been bringing back all sorts of strange tales from the alehouses and brothels. They go back and forth for a bit, until the maester reveals he knows his time has come. And he actually says some stuff that I wanted to read word for word, because it seemed dense with information. So, if that's alright, I'm going to pull that up. Yeah. I am going to read... What Mr. Eamon says to Sam. Okay. I shall not see Old Town again. I know that now. I will be with my brothers soon. Some were bound to me by vows and some by blood, but they were all my brothers. And my father, he never thought the throne would pass to him, and yet it did. He used to say that was his punishment for the blow that slew his brother. I pray he found the peace in death that he never knew in life. The septon sing of sweet surcease, of laying down our burdens and voyaging to a far sweet land where we may laugh and love and feast until the end of days. But what if there is no land of light and honey, only cold and dark and pain beyond the wall called death? Uh, and then Sam tries to tell him he's not dying, he's just ill and it'll pass. Oh, oh man, he's old! <laughs> and the maester says, not this time, Sam. I dreamed, in the black of night, a man asks all the questions he dare not ask by daylight. For me, these past years, only one question has remained. Why would the gods take my eyes and my strength, yet condemn me to linger on so long, frozen and forgotten? What use could they have for an old, done man like me? So yeah, what do you think of all that? <laughs> Makes me sad. Yeah, it's very sad and very morbid. Or like typical fears too of when you're being faced with death. Like, but what if? What if it's horrible? I feel like I mostly hear that from younger people. Mm -hmm. Um, uh people who are like afraid and have regrets and Mm hmm Yeah. I mean, there are old people out there who do have regrets. Yeah. Or turn out to be afraid. <laughs> like, I remember reading a Reddit story with someone who was talking about, I think, a family member's death who was old. And being with them in their last moments, they 
um, suddenly started showing fear, intense fear of death, and that was like the worst thing to watch them go through. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I'm just like. I imagine people who are very old are like just kind of done and <laughs> satisfied. It, right? Their yeah. bodies are falling apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably in pain all the time. I think that's what I hear most often is that mm-hmm. like people who are very elderly yeah. uh, kind of welcome. Yeah. I hear that too. Welcome death. But um, this is. Yeah, this is very sad and very. It's oh, heartbreaking. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You're supposed to be satisfied. Don't admit fear. <laughs> and then I'm scared now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And he's like, uh, we spoke about regrets a little bit, and he's thinking about um, his life. I don't know if he has any specific regrets, but he's just like remembering his father and his brother brothers yeah. and mm-hmm. he remembers his father saying uh it was his punishment to sit the iron throw for killing his brother i think there must be an accident killing the brother oh you think that... so well they do it on purpose i don't know hmm I don't know who Eamon's father was. Me neither. <laughs> or who his dead uncle would be either. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Mm. And yeah, so Eamon like says that the Septons sing about like the joys of the afterlife. But now Eamon's like, what if it's only cold and dark and pain and nothing? No! I know! (laughs) (laughs) And now he's like, why did- why was- why did I live so long then? (laughs) Yeah. Like, why did he deserve to live so long off that chest? Because 102 years in this- Medieval time, that's a feat. Yeah. For sure. And he's like... I think he's wondering what his purpose was then. Uh. He's like, why have I been forced to live so long, even though, like, my body is failing? Why am I still alive? (laughs) He probably doesn't think he did anything important in his life. He didn't do anything worth worth this long life of his. Yeah. But um yeah, there was just a lot in there, so I felt I felt compelled to read it word for word. Um So there's that. And then Eamon says he remembers the dragons. Sam's like you can't remember dragons. The last one died before you were born. Eamon says he sees them in his dreams. He sees a red star in the sky. Oh! <laughs> yeah. And he starts raving about half-remembered prophecies, wonders, and terrors that no living man could hope to comprehend. But then he finishes by saying perhaps he's just a feverish dying old man. Oh. It really feels like he has hope for the maybe for like the resurrection of his family. Cause he's fascinated by these dragons. Yeah. And he's suddenly like reminiscing about his death and wondering what his purpose could have been your last thoughts when you know you're going is yeah Eamon says he should not have left the wall Lord Snow (laughs) could not have known but fire consumes and cold preserves oh no (laughs) 
which is like maybe i'm reading into this too much but i was like was the wall keeping him alive perhaps <laughs> could have been the weather there how cold it is yeah maybe it like keeps away well i can imagine it keeping away like diseases and stuff like that but mm -hmm. i mean he's been in Bravosi for what like less than three days at this point and it and he's already yeah so it really feels like well like the travel time too yeah that's true that's true but yeah i'm probably reading into it too much but i was like maybe there's like some magic in the walls or something that's Ooh, like there could have been keeping him alive yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> uh so Eamon then asks Sam to do this for him as his last favor to him. Go down to the docks and learn all he can about these dragons. Come back and tell him? <laughs> he actually doesn't finish with that, so... Oh. <laughs> Let's hope he's alive when Sam gets back. <laughs> yeah. Sam says he will, but he thinks to himself that he wants to find Darien first. And then they could go down to the ships together coward do yourself <laughs> he thinks that they will return with food wine and wood so he asks gilly to bar the door behind him and he leaves okay he makes his way towards the ragman's harbor as he walks sam starts to worry that darian was maybe attacked in the streets and he's like lying hurt in a ditch or something and that's why he never made it back there are plenty of bravos swaggering through the streets with their swords, wanting to fight. Not quite sure what a bravos... bravo is? Let me find out. Maybe it's like a macho... macho man. <laughs> what does machismo, is what mom calls toxic men in Mexico. Machismo. Machismos. Oh, interesting. One definition is a violent troublemaker or hired assassin. Oh. Is a bravo. Interesting. Mid century mid eighteenth century from French from Italian. Oh. Sam checks several alehouses and inns. He tries asking a couple of polemen if they have seen a singer in black, but they either don't understand his broken high valyrian or they refuse to. I did not know Sam spoke high valyrian at all. Me either. Maybe he, like, did, took a crash course on the boat. <laughs> I would assume his father would be too racist to have, hope, have him learn that as a kid. Yeah, high valyrian. Mm-hmm. I don't- maybe he's just, like, picked up some of it from all the books he's read. Mmm. Yeah, yeah. He checks more alehouses, inns, and brothels, but can't find Darien. He almost bumps into two young men as he leaves a brothel, and one of them starts saying something in Bravosi. Sam tries to say he doesn't understand and edges away from them. The second man translates, saying, My friend says you are so fat it makes him sick, and you dress above your station. In Bravos, <laughs> Sam has learned the mighty dress in dark colors, which is apparently mm. the opposite of Westeros. Mm -hmm. The mighty dress uh, very colorfully in Westeros. Mm -hmm. Because you can afford colored clothes. Mm -hmm. Dye. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's not hard to come by in Bravos. They ask him if he is some great lord to wear the black, but a child's voice cuts in, saying he is not a lord. He's in the Night's Watch from Westeros. A scruffy, skinny girl pushes a barrow full of seaweed into the light. I wonder who this is. Or no one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What? What was her name? Cat? Uh-huh. Oh my god. Yo, if that is Arya. Is this just hitting you now? Yeah. Shit, son. Bruh. Probably <laughs> the second sibling of John's that he's bumped into. 
How many more in his travels? True. Yeah, so the girl says she saw another man of the Night's Watch down at the Happy Port, singing songs to the sailor's wife. She then gives Sam some advice about how to deal with the Bravos, and the two men eventually leave when she pulls out a little knife. Aww. Sam thanks the girl, and she tells him that wearing a sword after dark means he can be challenged. She offers him some free clams and asks if he's sailing to the wall. He says Old Town and asks who she is. She says no one. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh. <laughs> wow, Jess. <laughs> it's like yep. slapping you in the face. Um, she does say that he can call her cat. Fuck's sakes. Yep. <laughs> Perhaps I was just breezing through this. Yeah, are you good? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Are you even uh, ingesting what you're reading? <laughs> she asks what ship he'll be sailing on as he eats some clams, and he says they bought passage on the Lady Ushinora. The girl tells him that ship is gone, but Sam knows that. The captain had refused to wait any longer for Maester Eamon to feel better, and had left on the tide. But Sam doesn't want to say all this to the Barrow girl. He asks where she saw the singer, and she says at the happy port. He says he's going to wed the sailor's wife. Sam's like, I gotta go, and he runs off. They're breaking some vows. Yeah, he's like, Darian can't wed. He said the words. Mm hmm. You need cursed by your gods. Yes, yeah, so oh. I'm shook that you did not realize that was Arya. <laughs> nope. She says she's no one, and then she says you can call me Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh! And she's got the wheelbarrow full of clams. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Do you really think this is just some random little girl? Yeah, perhaps I was high. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so, um, this is definitely Arya. Oh. Oh, I know, right. Sam makes it to the happy port, and Darian's familiar voice calls out to him. The place is filled with naked women and men enjoying their nakedness. Okay. Darian sits at the center of it all with a woman in his lap wearing his black cloak. Darian introduces his lady wife and says he might still have enough coin for Sam to have one of her sisters. But Sam thinks that coin could have bought them food or wood so Mr. Eamon could keep warm. Sam snaps at Darian that he can't marry. Darian kind of rolls his eyes and says they're only wed for one night. Like, what does that mean? I... Honestly, the best I can guess is that this is just some kind of playing pretend? experience. It's some kind of role play that he's like uh, paying for. Okay. Yeah. So it's not real, but they just say, "Oh, we're getting married. It's our first night together." Ooh. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Okay. Sam tries to convince Darian to come back, saying Maester Aemon asked about the dragons. But Darian tells him if he won't have a girl, he can go away. Darian says he's done with the black, and he throws his black cloak in Sam's face. And then Sam hits him without thinking. Sam knocks him down and starts beating the shit out of him. For once, too angry to be afraid. And wow, this is like... I've never seen Sam like this. Sam! Yeah. Just this awoke something in him, apparently. <laughs> Seeing his Maester Eamon dying and him, this guy, wasting all his money on hookers and blow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone drags Sam off Darien, and Sam hits that person too without even looking at them. Then something crashes into his head, and the next thing he knows, he is being thrown outside and he's flying into the canal. Oh. Or did that must have been huge. Yeah, I mean, who could throw Sam like that? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like 300 pounds or something, isn't he? he yeah. He's a big boy. Mm -hmm. Sam tries to swim, but sinks like a stone. Ooh. He thrashes and tries to scream, but only ends up swallowing a bunch of water. 
Right when he thinks he's going to drown, he gets hoisted out of the water by a big black summer islander who starts to beat him on the belly until Sam spits out all of the water in his stomach, lungs, in him. <laughs> the summer islander introduces himself as Jondo. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. It's spelled with an X, so forgive me if that's wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying Jean Do. Sounds right to me. Okay. <laughs> Jean Do says he mates on cinnamon wind. He mates? Yep. I have no clue what that means. <laughs> huh. Uh, cinnamon wind sounds like a ship. Oh, okay. I'm like, this city is full of perms. <laughs> it sounds like a ship to me. Okay. Um, but I don't know what he means by he mates on it. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah, I'm assuming we'll find out in Sam's next chapter. <laughs> uh, and Jondo says he laughed to see Sam punch the singer. Then he says he knows about these dragons. Ooh! And that's the end of the chapter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sad that Eamon is probably going to pass away, not even Westeros. Yeah, he's not, not even, this even whole at country. home. It's in the show, like, he passed away at the wall, mm. where he belongs. But then, make me sad. And even from the start, Sam was like, he's not going to survive this trip. He's not going to survive John. Oh, John, uh... But John knew he had to get him away from the Red Woman, I guess. Maester Eamon? Yeah. Was he worried she was gonna, like, sacrifice him or something? Yeah. Oh, she was gonna find out he was a king! Yeah. Or a king's blood. Exactly. Because okay. he is a Targaryen, so he would have mm. king's blood. Yeah. And his father was literally the king, so... Yep. Um... So, turns out... Sam was right. Um, Maester Eamon's most likely gonna die. And it's sad and it breaks my heart that he's having Third. so many fears about it. Mm hmm. I think that comes with death. I think even the people who say that they're okay with it have secret fears. I don't know about that. Uh, I think it's nerve wracking either way. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I feel like some people I've definitely heard have, like, done everything they've wanted to do, are satisfied with how their life has gone, and... Ready for the next adventure, yada yada, now you're scared. <laughs> you might be projecting a little bit. <laughs> I, I'm obviously terrified of death. Maybe that's not mm -hmm. obvious, but... I can't relate to that sort of mindset, but I do believe that there are people out there who... Maybe one day I will, but right now it's big. Oof. Yeah, I mean... Life I... is scary short. When the time yeah. comes, I fucking hope <laughs> to God that I, I want it by that time. Or at least be accepting of it. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't... I literally can't imagine. <laughs> right so scary yeah i've cool. there's nothing that terrifies me more than death <laughs> <laughs> like everyone um, i know could fucking get killed and that doesn't scare me as much as death <laughs> eh, that'll scare me too because i'm thinking about what happened to them <laughs> where are they oh fuck are they right. nothing oh no <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> it's like they're your loved ones you're kind of worry. <laughs> See, I think for me, that just doesn't feel real to me. That doesn't feel like an actual possibility that could happen. Yeah, like everyone I know and love is dying. Oh, so that's why that doesn't really scare me because it doesn't feel mm -hmm. real. But Ooh. death, I know, is real and inevitable. So that <laughs> is why it scares me so mm -hmm. much because I know it's going to happen. I think my biggest fear is that, like, good good chance that one day. I'm gonna 
witness or find Johnny dead. Oh, fuck. Don't say shit like that. <laughs> that was like the first thought when I chose him as my person. I was like, oh, fuck. Worst part. I'm choosing your person. I can't. I can't think about that. So no. like, I think about <laughs> think about mom, and then I want to like scream. <laughs> no, mom. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Um. Anyway, <laughs> this got really <laughs> dark. We're all scared of death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey man, God. keep that shit to yourself. You're gonna trigger us all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eamon, stop. Damn. Pretend to be peaceful and wise, okay? Yeah, don't be selfish. <laughs> uh, so this chapter is taking us on a journey, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's that part of it, and then there's also like the dragons. Oh yeah. It sounds like the the rumors are spreading very far. Yeah, and yeah. Wide. What are your thoughts I on that? I am excited. I want Eamon to learn more about his... Um... I don't know. She... His Danny, his... Great, 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 great... Niece? Probably. <laughs> They're related somehow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know Do who they? his father I was, wonder so. if these rumors at all mention her. The Dragon Queen. Or just the dragons. Oh, I'm sure they mention her. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Because it's really awesome for him to realize that, oh, he's not the last one. Maybe yeah. he can die happy. <laughs> Knowing he's not the last Targaryen. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and that dragons are coming back. I... I mean, that would make me die happy. Oh. I have a sad feeling he's gonna be gone by the time Sam gets back. No! But I really hope I'm wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really want him, yeah, to learn more about the dragons. Yeah. And I wonder what Sam's gonna learn. Ooh. Is he gonna hear about Danny? Is he gonna hear her name? Will he recognize that He most likely will. He's smart. Yeah. He reads. He right? reads. He would know the Targaryen family tree. Mm hmm. He would have heard that Daenerys, Stormborn, and her brother were shipped across the sea. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's very well educated. Yeah, I liked this chapter. There was stuff going on. There was no traveling. Thank fuck. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Feels like, like some cameos. <laughs> yeah, from Arya. <laughs> Feels like things are, like, happening. Things are picking up a little. The occasional chapter where things happen. I definitely did not expect to see this group of people in Bravos at all. What group? Oh, them? Yeah. yeah Sam and Gil Gilly and Bravos. Are you shitting me? Right? <laughs> She's so far from home. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maester Aemon and Bravos? The fuck? Um, yeah. Sam? <laughs> like, I instantly felt bad when I saw him. Like, what? <laughs> what are you doing there, old man? Yeah. You had to travel all this way? Yeah, and he's like, fucking never been further from home, right? No. Sad place for him to die. I'm curious about this Summer Islander. Like, what does he know about the dragons and how? Do we know the name Jondo? Uh, I don't think so. Do we? Hold on. What was the guy's name from Karth? Jalabar Zo. Okay. <laughs> Okay, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> but it's like spelt similarly. I wonder if they're just in the same area. I don't know. Where's the Summer Islands? I don't know. It doesn't sound like Karth. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like it would be anywhere near Karth. Let me check the map. Summer Islands. Essos, please. Wait. <laughs> There's no Essos? 
There's literally no map of Essos in this book. Wow. That's so Find dumb. the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just gonna Google it. Okay, that's down. Down, down. Ooh. Let's see. That's like, it's between. Oh, those you are know, the Seminar Islands? Yeah, the Narrow Sea. Down. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah. Okay, they're to the south of Bravos, I guess. The Narrow Very Sea. South. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. How did they just? How do they know someone's a summer islander just by looking at them? Just because they're black? Maybe. Like they that look was a certain his, way. That was his only descriptor, other than People. him being big. He was big and black. Um, they are strong, tall, and handsome people. Their skin color includes nut brown, teak, ebony, and polished jet. Ooh, polished jet. Polished jet. They often wear capes of brightly colored feathers. Maybe it's that. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's I think that's it. Because he did have a cape of feathers. Oh! Right. Because he complains about uh, Sam having to buy him a new cape because the water ruined it when he pulled Sam oh, out. Oh no! Okay. Okay, that's probably... That's, that's it. That's the giveaway. All right. Cool. We learned something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, I actually like that chapter. Yeah, definitely better than Brienne's. Yeah. God, that's hard. <laughs> her chapters have been rough, dude. <laughs> I know. Which is sad. Isn't this wow. the first time we have her as a perspective character? Or second? No, this is the first time. She wasn't. Is it the first time? Fuck. Yeah, it is. Because I wanted her really bad at the start of this book. Oh, Brienne. <laughs> and I I am glad I didn't get her. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay, so that's going to be it for this episode. If you want more of the podcast, please follow us on Instagram. You can follow the podcast at Tigbab Podcast or follow us individually. My handle is Crimby and Jess's is Jess.Egan24. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search Tigbab Podcast or Tea is Good, Books are Better, and we will show up there. Also, please subscribe to our good friend Baram Barami on YouTube. He's the one who made our jingle, which you heard at the start of the episode, and he makes some really cool music. That's B-A-H-R-A-M. You can also find him on Spotify as Barambient. That's B-A-H-R-A-M-B-I-E-N-T. And please check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash tea is good, books are better. We have a few different tea-themed tiers with fun rewards, including outtakes, BTS stuff, and mini-episodes in which we force our brother to watch Game of Thrones, which he absolutely hates. So it makes for some fun discussions slash arguments. <laughs> Finally, if you would be willing to share the podcast with your family and your friends, it would be a huge help to us to grow the podcast. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next one for... Who do we got? The twins! Oh, both of them! Yeah, Cersei and Jamie. Oh my god, I'm excited. <laughs> oh my god. Hopefully Cersei. Big things happen. <laughs> Cersei, best perspective character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, thank you guys so much for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.